Risa 3D makes it easy to apply, modify, and review the results of loads of various types on a variety of different elements. Before we can actually go ahead and apply loads, we need to first make sure we have basic load cases set up. So I'll open basic load cases, and here I've already established a few basic load cases. Each basic load case I have also has a category assigned to it, and this is important in case we want to automatically create load combinations per the IBC. Now I also have gravity load, so the self-weight of the structure assigned in the dead load category as well. I'm going to add one more basic load case, so let's add a wind in the Z direction. And we'll assign it to the wind load category. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and close out of the basic load cases. Now I can start to add the loads from the draw load section of the home tab. So the first load I'm going to go ahead and add is a nodal load. So a nodal load is a load that's applied to a, to a point. And so you can see we have three different options for load. The first is a, a load, and that would be either like a point load or a moment. The second would be a, a displacement, really an, an enforced displacement. And so this would be used in a situation where you're evaluating a structure that's maybe failing. So like a sinking support or a footing, for instance, basically we're looking to determine how the displacement affects the structure. The other option in this case is a mass. So basically we're using an applied mass at a node to use in a dynamic analysis. So in this case, maybe it's a piece of equipment that's on the roof that you want to see how it vibrates or it, it, it itself is vibrating and you want to take that into account in the dynamic analysis. But in this case, I'm going to choose a load. I can choose the direction. So most loads have global directions. That's the uppercase X, Y, and Z. And in this case, we also have global moments around the X, Y, and Z axis. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose the X direction. I'm going to choose my basic load case, wind X, and then I'm going to choose a magnitude, in this case, negative two and a half kips. And then I'm going to go ahead, click to apply, and I'm going to choose a node that I want to apply it to. In this case, I'm going to apply it to this top node on the top of the column here. Now I applied my load in kips. And so one thing I can do is I can go into the unit setting. I can change units if I want. So if I wanted to use pounds for forces, or I wanted to use pound inches for linear forces, I could go ahead and do that. Now, once I've set this up exactly like I want to, I can go ahead and save these unit settings as the default, and I can always get back to the standard imperial or standard metric settings as well. Now, the next type of load I'm going to apply is going to be a line load. So if I open up line load, again, we can see in the directions that we have various directions for global, and then the lowercase x, y, and z are local directions. So this is going to pertain to the local axis of a specific member. So if a sloped member, maybe the local axis X, Y, or Z has changed. But this is useful for all different types of loads. We also have this PX, PY, PZ, which is the projected load. So a load projected along that axis. And then we have our moments. So in this case, a, a torque. And then also a load applied to the projected surface of a member. So if we wanted to provide, if we wanted to apply a projected surface load for this distributed load, we can do that here. In this case, again, I'm going to go ahead and choose a Y direction because I'm going to apply some dead load along the first floor, this first level uh, beams to be our cladding, basically. So I'm going to choose our dead load. We'll choose a start magnitude. So let's choose negative 0.15 kips per linear, linear foot. And then I could apply it upon the full length or partial length. In this case, I'm going to choose the full length. And again, I'm going to click to apply. And I'm just going to apply these beams along the edge of the member here. So I've got to apply to those five beams. Now I also want to apply a projected distributed load on our roof. So I'm going to use this for, let's say, a sliding snow load. And so instead of the direction Y, I'm going to choose a direction PY. I'm going to choose our BLC to be snow load. And we can choose a different start and end magnitude in this case. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose Instead of 150 pounds on linear foot, I'll choose 250 pounds on linear foot. And we do want to apply it to the full length of the member. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply and apply this projected snow load onto these roof beams. Now at any time, if I want to make a change to a member, maybe I wanted to make a change to the value of the load for these two end members. So if I click on one of the members, we can see that the line load properties are available in the properties panel. I can also use the control button to select a similar load. 
and we have those two loads selected. And since they have similar properties, I can kind of bulk change them together. So maybe I want to make this, um, you know, point, point 0.1 and point 0.175. So maybe those those members on the exterior of my roof get a smaller load. So I'm finished here. I'm going to go ahead and click Escape. So the next load I want to apply is a point load. Now this differs slightly from a nodal load in the sense that I'm going to apply this point load along the length of a member. So basically somewhere within between the I and the J nodes of a member. And so if I choose my direction Y here, we have the same types of direction, global, local, and also moments. I'm going to choose my BLC and then also my magnitude here. So I'll set my magnitude to be negative 0.3. And then I can choose a location. Now in this case, I'm going to choose click to apply. And I'm just going to apply this to the bottom cord of my trusses here. So in this case, maybe we have a partition that um, hangs from the bottom cord of this truss here. And so in this case, we want that load to be uh, as a point load on the bottom cord at 50% along the length of those members. Now I can go back to the home and we can go ahead and switch this to wireframe so we can see this a little bit better if we need to. Now I'm going to go ahead and select uh, a specific uh, grouping of members. So I'm going to get a view here and select this low roof as well as this high roof here. And I'm also going to make sure I select this uh, wall. So let's go ahead and select all of those members together. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock my selection. So basically, I just want the members on the roof so that I can go ahead and apply next our area loads. So I'm going to choose an area load. This is a member area load. Basically, this is an area load that will apply loads to members within that same plane. Now I can choose again a direction, but really when I choose a direction and also my load direction, it's defined based on the way that I draw in the surface load. So in this case, I have to define an A, B, C, and D node. The A node obviously is going to be the first node that I define, the B the second, the C the third, and the D the fourth. So in this case, let's start by using a dead load. So I'm going to apply a dead load. My load direction in this case, I want it to be A, B. And so when I set the load direction, I have to be cognizant of the way that I'm actually drawing the load. And so let's go ahead and set a magnitude. In this case, I'll set 15 pounds a, a square foot. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw that on my roof here. So we can just draw that on our roof. And you can see here that we've got that load in the direction that I defined. My A point was here and my B point was here. So we're in that same direction. Now I can also go ahead and do the same thing down here on our sloped roof. So if I go ahead and draw in a load along the length of the roof here, I can see the load put in. Now, one thing you'll notice here is obviously I, I made a mistake and I did this on purpose, but I need to change the direction. So I can out, at any time go ahead and select the load or that I applied and I can actually change the load direction. So my AB was along this uh, length here along the slope of the roof. I actually need to change my load distribution to be along the BC edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just change my load direction to be BC. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate around here. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a new load. So let's go back to home here. Let's close out and back to the area load. And again, let's just apply another load on the roof here. So I'll just apply our second load here. So we've got our second load there on the roof. Now at any time I can go ahead and switch my basic load case. So in this case, I want to switch to my snow load and I want to apply a projected load in the Y direction on the roof. So just like the snow load we applied for the distributed load on the roof, let's apply on the low roof an area load for that projected load. So again, I'm going to choose a magnitude. So let's set this to be, I don't know, 25 pounds a square foot. And again, we can go ahead and just draw in this load by clicking on the extents. So we've got the one load in. Again, we'll use the same direction drawing so that we get the same distribution and we've got our second load in. So we've got our two projected loads then in that case. Now I'm going to turn off my selection lock and the last load I want to add here is another area load in this case and I want to add a wind load. So I'm going to choose a wind load in the X direction because I want to put a wind load on this exterior frame. And so if I choose the load direction, in this case, I want this to be a two-way direction. And so this way it's going to distribute evenly all the load to all the different members in that plane. I also want to make sure the direction is set. So I'm going to choose the direction to be X. And I'll just go ahead and draw in our area load. 
And so now we've got that area load there on the structure. Now I'm going to go ahead and select, use the select elements by property to select all of our plates here. So I'll select all of our plates and use our lock selection because I want to apply some plate loading to these plates. And it's just easier when I only have those selected. So now I can go back to the home tab and I'm going to go ahead and choose a plate surface load. So I can choose the BLC we want to apply. In this case, I'm going to choose a live load. I can also choose the direction again, local, global, projected. I'm going to choose a local Z axis and then I'm going to choose 40 pounds a square foot and I'll apply to my selected member. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those plates and then click apply to a selected. And so really quickly and easily I can apply all of those different surface loads. Now the last load that I want to apply before we go ahead and run the analysis is a wall surface load. So if I click wall surface load, I'm going to switch our BLC here to our final one that we haven't really done anything with, which is Win Z. And we're going to apply a wall surface load to the wall panel here. And so I'm going to choose the direction. In this case, I'm going to set that global direction to be Z. I'll choose a distribution. We can choose from uniform or tapered. In this case, I'm going to choose tapered and I'm going to set my top and bottom magnitudes. So let's set our top magnitude to be 25 pounds a square foot and our bottom magnitude to be 15 pounds a square foot. Now we can choose a height to be the entire wall or we could choose partial. When we choose partial, we'd actually set the distance above the bottom that the load would start and then we would set a total height for that load. In this case, I'm just going to do it on the entire wall, choose click to apply, and then apply it to that wall. With all our loads applied, we can now set up load combinations, run the analysis, and then review results. For more information about creating and applying loads in RESA 3D, visit resa.com.